be. The stunning Massachusetts upset gave the GOP much more power than it's had in a year. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid's filibuster-proof Senate smashed. So what happens now? We went to Capitol Hill and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell went on the record. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to be back. And of course, it's always fun to be in the U.S. Capitol. It's a gorgeous building, as I always know it every time we start these interviews. Yeah, the most important symbol of a democracy in the world. Speaking of democracy, you have a new member, um, or you're going to have a new member as soon as he's sworn in, Senator-elect Brown from the state of Massachusetts. Did you meet him today? Yeah, he was here for a meeting in my office on Thursday, and we took him to a lunch that we have every Thursday that includes all the Republican senators. And I can't recall the arrival of a new Republican senator that was more happily greeted than this one. So what, everyone applause? Absolutely. Or? We stood up and applauded. I mean, th you know, this was significant in every way, not only a Republican being elected in the most, arguably the most liberal state in America, but being elected in large measure on the health care issue. Um, I think Brown's election means the end of the health care proposal as currently constituted that the Democrats were trying to jam through, that they did jam through the Senate thanks to the Cornhusker kickback and the Louisiana purchase and the other tactics that they employed. I think that's over. The American people have been saved from that by the election of, of uh, the new Massachusetts senator. Of course, though, he has said that he's not uh, a Reagan Republican or any other kind of Republican. He's a Scott Brown Republican. So there's still, I, I imagine, some level of uncertainty, at least for the Republicans, is where he's going to fit in line here. Well, we have a lot of diversity in our conference anyway. Uh, I can tell you a senator from Maine doesn't necessarily see things like a senator from Mississippi. So we have broad a philosophical diversity, and the Northeast Republicans are not exactly like a Southeast or a Western Republican. But on the health care issue, we were together, all 100 all 100 percent of us, every single one, I thought that this was a bad deal for America. Uh, how enthusiastic, I mean, outside of Massachusetts, I mean, as we saw a level of enthusiasm in Massachusetts because we took our show there, but uh, did, you, did you talk to people outside of Massachusetts? Yeah, people were coming up to me in Kentucky saying, do you think Scott Brown's got a chance? And last week I was flying back <clears throat> from Kentucky to, to Washington, and of course there were a bunch of people on the plane who wanted to talk about health care and, and Scott Brown, they view this as sort of indistinguishable. Got off the plane, a lady came up to me and said, I'm, I'm a constituent of yours. I live in Kentucky. Meet my husband, who lives in Massachusetts, and we're going up to Massachusetts so he can vote for Scott Brown. So he cared enough to travel to, to buy a ticket? Yeah, to she, they bought a ticket for no other purpose than to get him up to Massachusetts to vote in that special election. Health care. Um, so now what? Um, Speaker Pelosi has said today she does not have the votes in the House to adopt the Senate bill, which, of course, puts a little bit of a wrench into any plans that might have been that the House would simply adopt the Senate bill. Is health care as we know it in these bills, over? Well, let me tell you this. The, the 2,700-page monstrosity that took a half a billion out of Medicare, raised taxes a half a billion dollars, and raised insurance premiums for everybody else is dead. We start over. We're going to start over from scratch? We need to start over, as we've been advocating, my side has been advocating sometimes, start over and go step by step to fix the problem, right, which is cost. That's what you want to do. Is that what's going to happen, do you think? Or there, is there still, do you think the Democratic members of the U.S. Senate are still going to <clears throat> proceed uh, with the existing bill minus some adjustments? Well, as long as they try to restructure one-sixth of the economy by cutting Medicare, raising taxes, and raising premiums, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think there's a lot of nervousness on the Democratic side. The leadership marched them out right off the cliff uh, politically trying to get them to pass a bill the American people hated. I don't think they're going to have any stomach for that one more time. Do you think there's any division within the Democratic <clears throat> side of this now? I mean, with the election of Senator Luck Brown, um, have you seen any sort of changes within the, the Democratic senators here? Too early to tell. I think the attitude is they would like for this issue to go away for a while. The Democratic senators, some of them. Democratic senators, many of them would like for this issue to go away for a while. How about Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid? Do you think he wants this to go away? I think you'll have to ask him. But um, my guess is further efforts to jam this wildly unpopular bill uh, through this Congress would be very counterproductive for them in next November's election. Right. Big decision across the street at the United States Supreme yeah. Court today, um, a decision that actually uh, I think you tried to challenge the uh, law once before having to do with campaign finance reform. Your thought today? Important. I mean, the core of the decision was now uh, a corporation that owns a media outlet, which has been free to speak, will be treated no differently from a corporation that doesn't own a media outlet. Every corporation and every union will be able to speak freely at any time, whether they own a media outlet or not.
free speech for everyone. All right. It's free speech is what uh, drove uh, Justice Kennedy's decision today. He wrote the 5-4 uh, majority opinion. Would you be opposed, as a, as, a, as a possibility, as an option, having everybody who contributes, including corporations or unions, instantly go instantly be recorded online so that the American people could say who's giving what and when? Oh, sure. I mean, the court upheld uh, disclosure of sources of campaign spending. But basically what they did was equalize the playing field and say <clears throat> every entity, union, corporation, corporation that owns a media outlet, all are treated the same under the First Amendment. Everybody can speak freely at any time without government restriction. Any thought for Governor McDonnell, um, who's going to be giving the response to the present State of the Union next week? Well, I think he'll be, he was a great choice, uh, Leader Boehner. You chose him. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you ought to like the choice. Well, I the do choosers. like the choice, of course. <laughs> I, you know, he, he's an example of a, of a new Republican governor just sworn in a week ago, fresh-faced with new ideas, and the American people need to meet him. Next, does Democratic Senator Bob...